This is section 2.7, and we're going to be looking at graphs and applications of logarithms. First of all, a quick reminder, we really found the logarithm function by defining it as the inverse of the exponential function with the same base. So, if I wanted to write the inverse for a log for an uh, excuse me, if I wanted to write the inverse for the exponential function 6 to the x power, I would simply write it down. I would say inverse of an exponential is a log with the same base, 6. And I'm good to go. Conversely, if I have a logarithm function, the inverse is an exponential. So f inverse of x is going to be exponential with a base of 8, 8 to the x power. In number three, I have a, an exponential function. Inverse is a logarithm. The base is two-thirds. So the logarithm base two-thirds of x. In the last example, f of x equals the log base x. Remember, that really means the common logarithm, or the logarithm base 10 of x. The inverse of the logarithm is the exponential with the same base, so 10 to the x power. So typically I don't really do any algebra, any work exactly to find inverses of logs and exponentials. I just know that they are inverses of one another and I write them down. If I wanted to graph a logarithm function, Probably the easiest way to go is to start with the inverse, the exponential, because I already know how to calculate those really well, and then I'll just use that idea of flipping the x's and the y's to find the table of values for the log. So here I'm going to say, well, I know the inverse function of the log base 3 would be the exponential base 3. So let me start with a quick little table of values for that. Three to the negative second would be one over three to the second, one ninth. Three to the negative one, one third. Three to the zero is one. Three to the first is three and 3 to the second would be 9. I don't necessarily need to graph that because I wasn't asked to graph the inverse. I really wanted to graph the logarithm function. But the easiest way to get this table of values for the logarithm base 3 of x is to just take this one, which wasn't very hard to generate, and swap the x's and y's. So this was helpful, but this is the one I'm actually going to graph. This is the function that I wanted. So let's do that. One ninth negative two. We're really close to the y-axis there. One third negative one, maybe about here. One zero. Three one. 9, 2. Just like before, in the last section, we're seeing here this vertical asymptote on the y-axis. We're already really, really close to it. And you may remember from the previous section that a logarithm graph does have a vertical asymptote. In fact, if I were to go back and grab the graph that we generated together, at the beginning of section 2.6. This was actually the logarithm base 2. And notice that these two graphs are very, very similar. This one goes up a little bit faster. This one goes up a little bit slower. But the general shape is almost the same. 
We have a vertical asymptote on the y-axis. Notice the x-intercept is 1 on both graphs. And then it simply goes up slowly up and to the right. This is our end behavior on the right. In fact, all logarithms with bases larger than 1, which is actually the only ones that I'm going to ask you to consider, are going to have graphs of this shape. Once we know the basic shape of a graph, we know that we can graph variations just by shifting left, right, up, down, upside down, right? So let's list the basic features of a logarithm graph. Log base b of x. And I'm going to assume that our base b is larger than 1. We've seen that we have a vertical asymptote on the y-axis, on the negative y-axis, in fact. And in both cases, as I just pointed out, the x-intercept was 1. All of these graphs go through the point 1, 0, which does make sense when you think about it, right? Anything to the 0 power is what gives you 1. What about domain and range? If I glance back at the graph that we created a moment ago, this is that log base 3 to the x. Notice for the domain, the x values are all bigger than 0. In fact, since this never really touches the y-axis, x can't ever even equal 0. So do my domain would be from 0 to infinity, not including the 0. This goes right along with that idea that the argument of a logarithm is greater than 0. We talked about that in the previous video, right? The fact that you can only take the logarithm of positive numbers. Now, what about the range? If I once again take a quick look back at the graph that we drew, certainly the y values are going to get infinitely small, down to negative infinity here. And although I know this goes up really slowly, it does keep going up forever. So we actually are going to go all the way from negative infinity to eventually positive infinity. Using a larger base had what effect on the graph? Again, we saw it rather subtly, but we had looked at that 2 to the x graph that we did at the beginning of 2.6, and then we looked at the 3 to the x graph that we did just a few minutes ago. So I can get these on the same page here for you. Here's the 3 to the x. And we said the graphs were extremely similar, but the 3 to the x went up just a little bit more slowly. Notice here we're at 9, 2. Here we're actually at 8, 3. So the bigger the base, the more slowly the graph goes up in its end behavior on the right. In terms of what I'd like you to be able to do accurately when you show me a transformed graph, I definitely want you to be sure you get the asymptote in the right place. And then I'd also like you to think about what happens to the x-intercept. How does it shift when you draw your graph? Other than that, all I'm looking for is a general shape for a logarithmic curve. You don't have to be super accurate with any of the other parts of it. If I want perfect, perfect precision, I would, of course, go to the calculator. All right, so in here we have the log base 2 of x plus 4. I'm looking at a graph that's been shifted left 4. So I'll start by saying my vertical asymptote, which used to be on the y-axis, has been moved left 4. Additionally, the x-intercept, which used to be at 1, I'm also going to move that to the left 4. 
So it's now at negative 3. And then I'm going to sketch in a graph. I'm going to go down towards this vertical asymptote, come up and go through my shifted x-intercept, and I'm just going to slowly increase from there. Sort of the classic shape of a logarithm graph. For my domain, all of my x values are larger than negative 4. So this would go from negative 4 to infinity. And the range still goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. In graph number 2, we have minus the logarithm base 2 of x, minus 2. The negative in front, the negative multiplier, if you will, turns this graph upside down or reflects it across the x-axis. And that minus 2 moves it down 2. All right. Typically, my vertical asymptote is on the negative y-axis. But when I flip it upside down, that means it's now going to be on the positive y-axis. Shifting down 2 isn't going to change the location of the vertical axis asymptote. So I'm just going to remind myself that this graph is going to have a vertical asymptote on the positive y-axis. Additionally, the x-intercept, which was at 1, 0, has moved down 2. So here's the new location of that point. From there, I'm once again going to just draw in a logarithmic shape, keeping in mind that it's going to be upside down compared to this one. So it's going to go up along the y-axis, and then it's going to go slowly down as I come over to the right. My domain all of the x's are bigger than 0, so 0 to infinity. And the range, once again, goes from negative infinity to infinity. So our graph shifting, nothing much has really changed. We have the same ideas for transformations as we've seen a number of times this semester. All right, next video we'll take a look at some applications.